Uh, good morning. We have a 12-layer Gerber board with one through drill. What we'd like to do is convert that into 3D so we can do a thermal simulation on a small part of the board. I've taken Artworks a NetXG program and I've put the various Gerber layers into their stack of position. Then on the drill side, I've taken the drill data, converted it to Gerber using Artworks Drill to Gerber and run it through from top to bottom. Okay. For the output, I have selected Artworks 3DI output. I'm going to take a very small window. This is only about six by five millimeters. We're going to execute this and create what is called a 3DI file. So let's just click execute. And this will take a while, so I'll pause. We've finished and now we're going to look at our 3DI file. So here's our 3DI file and each one of these gold color layers is a metal layer and each one of the green layers is the dielectric that goes between it. You can see some of the areas where there's no metal there. We're going to fill those in later. I'm going to show you what the vias look like by suppressing all of the dielectric. There you can see the vias that are running through the entire board from top to bottom. And if I zoom in here with the Z value, there. Not the scale, but easier to see what's going on. So each one of these sections is a little cylinder that goes between the two layers it passes through. All right, so that's going to be our starting point. We're going to get this into SolidWorks by exporting it as a parasolids file and then importing that into SolidWorks. Go to File, Export, and we're going to select Parasolid for FEA. Let's look at what our options are. We're going to organize the parasolid file by layer. We're going to remove any duplicate pin objects. We're going to expand our dielectrics a little bit. We have to do that when we create the space between the conductors or we'll get slivers at the edges. So I'm expanding the dielectric by 0.2 millimeter. We're going to generate these negative dielectrics on the conductor layers. We're going to a layer like this and we're going to fill that in with dielectric there and there and there and there. Anywhere there's a gap in the conductors. I don't need to remove any of these uh, vertices. Now on the vias, we want to merge all of the vias. The vias are actually separate pieces that go all the way through. We want to merge them into one cylinder, and we want to model them as an eight-sided cylinder. As the via passes through the conductor or the dielectric, we want to add a matching hole so that everything mates perfectly. And we'll call this one the small one. Okay. Done. Let's open it up in SolidWorks. We'll go File, Open. Parasolids is our format. And this is the one we just created, the small one. And as far as options go, I'm not really sure what these options do. I'm just going to leave the default Triforming Solids. Click Open. We'll create the file. So that's our stack up. And on the left here, you can see all of the various parts. Each part represents a functional layer. I'm going to turn the parts off and let's look at them layer by layer to see how they're built up. So we're starting with our top metal layer. And you can see that it's a number of different solid bodies. If we expand the tree, we'll see there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven bodies. And as you click on them, they get highlighted. So even though the Gerber wasn't nice and clean like that, when we get it into 3D, it's nice and clean. And there you can see the hole in this body where the via passes through. Let's look at that via. All right, there's the three vias that we captured in this little window. They mate perfectly with the hopper. We generated a body or bodies to fit in here so that we get a nice continuous block of data. There's no gaps when you try to simulate that for thermal. And those are in the sections that we call the dielectric. So the M1 dielectric would be the dielectric that sits in between the M1 conductors. And there you can see it. And these are all bodies and they mate perfectly with the conductor that they butt against. So the same process gets repeated on all the layers. Let's look at layer 12. There's the dielectric. There's the conductor on 12. So what we end up with when we're done is a complete solid volume made up of many, many solid parts, all which made perfectly. When you go to do your FEA analysis, you can start at the top and mesh these. So you get meshes for each one of these and you can apply your boundary conditions. And then you can measure the gradients of, of the temperature as it moves along to the bottom. Thank you.